people, welcome to the BBC YouTube channel. Should you wait for the buyer to make a decision or should you try and find other buyers? You shouldn't postpone your decision. Salespeople too often agree to postpone their decisions until later. If you want more of this content, subscribe to the BBC YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. If a prospect doesn't reply to your email, it can be difficult to maintain communication. It's best if you reserve judgment and wait for the other party to take the first step in order to move forward. Determining the reservations of your prospect is more effective. Use any one of these five questions to identify what the prospect's issue is and propose a mutually beneficial agreement. Here's a quick watch on how to counter We'll Think About It in Sales. Go deeper by watching our list. Identify the three most likely obstacles and ask the prospect to choose one. We understand that you may be hesitant to try out machine learning. Some of our customers are not certain about their concerns so I want to answer your question. You might be concerned about the cost or implementation, but most businesses are intrigued by machine learning's capability. To move forward, it helps to identify the obstacles you're currently facing. Ask for permission to speak candidly. I might ask you what the advantages and disadvantages of your decision might be, or I might offer an opinion on a different option. When you speak to people, focus on the emotional pain they have not been addressing. Discuss the financial implications of that problem and find a solution. Get a reality check. Do you want to continue working with me or not? Many salespeople are hesitant to ask for a reality check because they think it may create negative thoughts in the customer's mind. But David Sandler from Sandler Training used to say you can't lose what you don't have. Awkward questions can help you make more sales. If there's no chance of working together, at least you'll know before wasting any more time. Request the next step. That sounds right. It's as if you were the one making this decision. When you are drafting an agreement, it's important to be agreeable with your counterpart. If you get the opportunity to book a phone call and the prospect commits to giving you a final decision, then you'll know how things will go much better than not knowing at all. Set a time frame. I understand. If I don't hear back from you by this date, what should I do? In order to figure out what the prospect needs, try getting them to talk about their issues. This should provide a lot of insight about what the person is struggling with and what would be most helpful for them. Ask what will change. Interesting. Can I ask what you're currently working on? What can I help you think through right now? When prospects need to think it over, they need help from their sales rep. Role play with them on the phone and facilitate clearer decision making. Check on key stakeholders. Would you like for me to do any research about your team members before making a decision? After looking at key factors, your prospect will make a final decision on which vendor to choose. This will be your last opportunity to give the prospects the talking points they need from you that will help them to be your champion in this meeting. Ask if there's anyone else you should speak with and offer any last-minute support that your prospect requires. Tell them you'll follow up. Sounds like we're on the same page. When will be a good time to check in again? To avoid your prospect thinking longer about the opportunity until it is too late, set a realistic timeline when following up with them. They should also expect that they will need to meet with other stakeholders before they make their final decision. If they don't have a decision by a deadline, ask them for a final answer and if that falls through, move the timeline up. Ask questions to understand the reasons why. If you spend a lot of time with the customer, it is fairly reasonable to ask what is holding them back. This works both ways. You get a better understanding of your customer and they feel honest and reassured by your concern. For example, you could say, sure, but then ask, do you mind if I ask what's holding you back? This would invite them to think about their issue on the spot. Ask how to get in touch with them. Send the potential customer a summary of your discussion and then follow up with them afterwards. They may need to talk to their partner before deciding. If you are feeling comfortable, you can set a time frame where they will hear from you again. Tell them availability is limited. This technique is only effective for last-minute bookings. By communicating that you are running out of available rooms, you will help the pressure on the customer into a accepting your offer. Even if they can't make a decision on the spot, you can reassure them that you will keep in touch with them. Offer to send more options. 
If a customer wasn't able to find what they wanted, sending out one last email is creative solutions to keep their interest is a good idea. Doing research and brainstorming ideas will make them feel like you're still selling for them even though it could take days before coming up with something new. Accept the rejection politely. When you are speaking with a customer that is not being open to your product, it can be worthwhile to push for more. However, when this does not work, respond politely with take your time or sure, no problem. When you are selling a new product and someone says they have to think about it, you can get the person's attention with a personalized message. By using these scripts for overcoming the need to think about it sales objection, you can see if your prospect really needs to think about it or if they are blowing you off. This will save you weeks of chasing and begging for a deal that will never close. It sounds like one of the three things is holding you back. Are you not going to be a deal for whatever reason and just want to get me off the phone? Do you like the idea but need to find money or ask your partner? Or do you really like the idea? Hey blank, I might have given you too much information on the warranty, that's it. Now, hit the mute button and let them tell you what they really think. Would you like me to stop if this isn't what you want? I don't want you to be hurt. In the books, The Paradox of Time Pressure, the paradox of immediacy has always been for salespeople who want to sell but need to be given leads and a customer is not yet convinced to buy. Not all of the customer is necessarily open to you sharing their decision, which can result in you getting frustrated and blaming them. Rather, it's your responsibility to not make the customer feel misled or offended by improper preparation rather than blaming them. You can stop blaming and start taking responsibility responsibility for the objection by preparing for it the way you get to the sales call. Here is what to say, here's what to offer, and here's how to offer it. Here are some questions to help you in your decision-making process. How much was it? When do I need it by? And what's a realistic budget? If you're selling IT services and data protection, here are a few questions that relate to this trade. Mr. Prospect, here are six things you need to think as you're deciding. How much is your data worth? Who is protecting your data daily? How much spam are you getting on your email? How much time do you spend deleting that spam? What is your time worth? What happened the last time you lost data? What is your definition of a business heart attack? What is the cost in hours or days of work between 99% and 100% guaranteed uptime? 3.65 days of downtime. Would you like to think about these questions by yourself or with me? Take into consideration you have expertise in your field. If a customer is consulting you for advice about something, it's crucial that you portray confidence, not just information. I want to think about it is your golden opportunity to give value. The secret is when you call a prospect, don't get frustrated when they say, I want to think it over. Instead, act as if you are surprised by the response and make sure that you present my solution in exactly the manner I have described above. When presenting this answer to a prospect, your tone must be both friendly and calm. The audience will see that you are prepared and they might be impressed or they might be engaged and willing. With this solution, you will not succeed 100% of the time but you will create value. That's it for this video BBC member. Remember to subscribe to our channel and if you feel like we've delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person as a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you on your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video, but it isn't until you actually take action that you'll start to see results. See you soon!